Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa, and we're really happy that you're here with us for this video. Today, we are going to make a pasta dish that is called timbalo. Now, timbalo is a traditional Italian dish, but it can be made a variety of ways. I think everybody who makes timbalo makes it their own way. We had, Melissa and I, had timbalo years ago at an Italian restaurant and absolutely loved it. So, I had Melissa take out a piece of paper and a pencil and I picked it apart and we wrote down everything that was in it and then I came home and recreated it. And I'll tell you, this is pretty much exactly what we had at that restaurant. We think it's really good. When our kids were still at home before they grew up and became adults and moved away, this was one of their favorites. It was something that I could make and we could eat on several times. It made a huge amount of food. But since our kids have left, I have cut the recipe in half. It still makes a huge amount of food but it's not as much as what I used to fix. We, we used to eat on it two, three times and then have some left over for lunch. So this is a more manageable recipe. It's a, a little smaller recipe. We normally make it in a cast iron skillet because that's how it was served to us in that restaurant where we originally had it. It could just as easily be baked in a nine by 13 casserole dish. So if you don't have a big cast iron skillet to bake it in, no worries. Bake it in a nine by 13 baking dish. All right, let's talk about what you're going to need. Of course, with it being a pasta dish, you're going to need some pasta and we're using spaghetti. Now, Melissa and I both prefer thin spaghetti. Sometimes it's called angel hair spaghetti, but that's our favorite, so that's what we use. You certainly don't have to use thin spaghetti. The restaurant that we ate at where we first had this did not use angel hair or thin spaghetti, but it's just what we prefer, so that's what we have. I'm gonna go ahead and get that this in our boiling water because it takes about seven to nine minutes to cook. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. And I like to break it. It's just more manageable to stir up if it's been broken. So I normally break it into about thirds when I'm putting it in. That way it's just easier for me when it comes time to get it all stirred together. If you don't want yours broken, if you like yours in bigger, longer pieces, then by all means, leave them that way. Okay, so I'm going to just give this a little stir down in there, get it started. And when it comes to a boil, which should be real soon, we will start the timer. Actually, it's already, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer for seven minutes and then we'll check it. The rest of what you need is some marinara sauce. Now I have a huge jar here. This is a 40 ounce jar. I don't think I'll use all this, but that's what I found at the grocery. I think usually I use a 32 ounce jar, but I will tell you that we like it saucy. We do not like dry pasta, so we use a lot on ours. And especially if you're going to have leftovers, your pasta will soak up some of it, so you need it really saucy so that your leftovers will have some sauce on it. You're going to need one cup of diced onion, and that's about a medium dice, and one cup of diced green bell pepper, Again, that's about a medium dice. You're going to need a four ounce can of sliced mushrooms and a 2.25 ounce can of sliced olives. You're also going to need pepperoni. Now, we get our pepperoni at a local Mennonite store and I'm not really sure how many ounces this is because we don't buy it that way, but it's, it's about a cup and I just chop it up. I just cut it into cubes. So about a cup of pepperoni. And then we're using, hang on, because I want to show you. You are going to need some frozen chicken breast strips. This is a 22 ounce bag and I'm using about half of it. These are frozen. 
So I'm sticking these in the microwave for just a minute or two to thaw them out. I won't cook them. They're already cooked and they're going to cook in the oven, but I am going to throw them in the microwave real quick to thaw them out before we put them in our dish. Then you're also going to need some mozzarella cheese and some Parmesan. Yes, I'm using the green tub from Crafts. If you, <laughs> if you want to grate your own Parmesan cheese, by all means do that. I have some in the refrigerator that we've used for other recipes. But for this, we really do like the green tub. So that's what I'm using and that just goes on top. Okay, we're going to let our spaghetti cook and when it's finished cooking and I've got it drained, we'll come back and put everything together. I'm gonna also heat this chicken up, so we'll be right back. Our spaghetti has boiled and it's ready to use, so we're just going to add that to our bowl. And now, literally, everything else just gets dumped in. If I can get all this spaghetti out of here. Every noodle needs to come to the party. Okay, so let's start with our marinara. Put a little bit of that in just to get it started. Our onions, peppers, mushrooms, black olives, our pepperoni, and you wanna make sure that that's not stuck together. Make sure those pieces don't stick. You want them individual. You don't want a big clump of pepperoni in there. Our chicken that we've heated up in the microwave. And we will stir that all together. I mean, it already smells good. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but we used about half the box of spaghetti. We only used about eight ounces. That was a 16 ounce box. So we only used about half of it. Actually, we had already used the first half the other day. So, oh, let's put it all in. I know us. We like it saucy. All right. Doesn't that look delicious? It does look nice. Looks just like what we had at the restaurant. Now, you want to put, let me wash my hands up a minute. Okay, you want to put a little oil in your skillet or your nine by 13 baking dish, whatever you're using. Just put a little bit in there and spread it around. You just wanna coat the bottom well, even up on the sides a little bit. You can do that. Okay. Then in we go with our timbalo. Let me tell you, this is plenty for a family of four. In fact, I don't know how you eat, but for us, this would probably feed at least six. We used to double this, and I am not joking when I tell you that we would eat on it two or three times, didn't we, Melissa? Oh, it was, but that's your kind of your philosophy there. Yeah, my philosophy. Eat two or three times after you cook once. That's right. My philosophy is cook once, eat twice. Sometimes three times. Now, we're going to top that with some really good mozzarella. How much? Mm -hmm. Enough. I don't know. You just want to cover it. You want plenty on there. So it just melts and makes a good cheesy layer. I've never measured it, so I honestly cannot tell you how much. This is a 
a mini ounce bag. 32 ounce bag. It says it's eight cups. I will use probably five or six cups of it at least. Because we like it cheesy. Saucy and cheesy. Okay. Does that look like enough for you, Melissa? That looks wonderful, honey. Okay. Then we're going to take the green can, the green tub, and we're just going to put some Parmesan right on top. How much? Mm, I don't know. Enough. As much as you want. It's up to you. And like I said, if you want to grate your own, by all means do that. That would be fine too. That would be wonderful. Okay. I'm going to say that was probably half a cup or so. Now, our oven is preheated to 350 degrees, and we're going to put this in for 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, we'll check it. If it's not started to kind of brown on top, we might turn the broiler on for just a minute. But we don't. You don't want it. You don't want it brown, completely brown on top. You might have some brown patches, but you just want that cheese to be melted really good, so that it's ooey and gooey. So in we go for 30 minutes and then we'll be right back. Our timbalo is out of the oven. I did put it under the broiler for about two to three minutes just to get a little color on the uh, Parmesan and mozzarella cheese. So it has cooked. Of course, everything that was in it was already cooked. All we had to do was heat it through and melt that cheese. So let's taste. I'm not going to take a huge amount because we are going to eat. And I will wait and eat when we get to the table, to the real table. Mm -hmm. Yum. Maybe one more little scoop. That piece of chicken right there was yelling for me. All right. This really is a good dish. I, I thought about this after I put it in the oven. I was going to say when we stirred it all together, if you want to add some garlic powder, onion powder, garlic salt, whatever you want to put in it, you certainly can do that. We've been making this for years and we just don't feel like it really needs it. We like the flavor of it the way it is. Um, there's plenty of salt in our opinion. There's plenty of salt in the marinara sauce and you know, the other things that go in it. So you really don't need to add salt. But if you wanted to add some garlic powder, you could certainly do that. Wouldn't hurt a thing. You make it your own. That's the great thing about cooking. You know, you get to fix it the way you want it. A recipe for something like this is just a suggestion. You can change it any way you want to. That is so, so good. And it's exactly like what we had at the restaurant. That is really good. I think if you try this, you'll really enjoy it. It's hot. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us for our video. If you would, we'd appreciate you going right under here and giving us a thumbs up. That just says you liked our video. If you've not already, we would really appreciate you clicking the subscribe button and the little notification bell on the word all that just subscribes you to our channel and allows them to send you a notification every time we add a new video. And remember that right under this video, there is a description box with the title of the recipe. If you click it, it will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe there for you, so you'll have it written out 
and our contact information is at the bottom of that box. Thank you again so much for joining us. We really do appreciate those of you who have subscribed to our channel. That helps us to build our channel, and we really do appreciate you for doing that. Remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.